Alright, hope everybody is doing well. I just posted my 30,000 records uh, video, which is already getting some traffic on it, which is really pretty cool. I looked at most of the records, and it's just as what I thought, you know, uh, people on eBay want 10 bucks, maybe $20 each, and wanting is a lot different than actually getting. And the condition of some of these uh, would, you know, be bringing it closer to the 3 and $5 value. So if you went to your local record shop, these would be the 3 and the 5 and there's a couple in there that might be in the dollar pile. But I mainly went to see who was going to show up and had fun, and I invited one of my friends to go to another day if he uh, uh, emails me in time. Otherwise, I might still decide to go out Saturday for Dollar Day. We'll see. I just don't need any more records at the moment. Even this uh, Who record that I found at the Goodwill bins, that probably would have easily sold for $3, and even in this condition, because... Uh, you know, supply and demand. There was very few rock records there of any kind of notable groups there, and so something like this would have definitely had sold, even in this condition because that's where it was. And when I talk about supply and demand, I'm watching a lot of people that do auctions and sales off the East Coast. One guy bought hundreds and hundreds of bottles, and he could have bought a, a beer can collection for probably peanuts or whatever, but you know, I, I'm not going to start a beer can collection. I think I've got about 10 or something decorating my kitchen, maybe five, um, but that's really all I found all over these years. I don't find very many for sale. Uh, sometimes people want five and ten dollars for that, you know, eBay price because eBay is like three dollars for the cheaper cans from the 70s. That's what you want is the 70s and before. Um, the cheaper cans are, are three dollars plus shipping, so it works out to ten dollars for a beer can that's worth about 50 cents to a dollar. So I have never even started and you just see those things on the East Coast and Midwest or whatever But you just don't see them here. I've never seen anybody with a beer can collection here I think my five is one of the bigger can collections that I know of at least um, I want to show you one card that I picked up and uh, For my uh, one of my many collections and this is going to be uh, the only one I have in black ink and this wasn't a top loader when it was delivered a uh, Gary Rath so that Dodgers card in page there, Gary Rath. Um, not sure how well he did in the bigs or if he even really made it. He's card number three or 290, and um, that was a dollar plus a dollar shipping. Uh, it got some red damage here and a dinged corner there. So really, it's only worth a dollar. But I'm not sure that Gary Rath is an easy autograph signer to get through the mail. And a lot of these guys, I researched them before I buy, and I was like, you know, I don't know if Jesse Ibarra, Jamie LaPiccolo, you know, Sean Gallagher, Mike Kashevitz. You know, uh, Dustin Hermanson might be a good signer, I don't know. And so this is what I have so far, this 9 here and then this page here. And you can see I wrote 1996 Bowman, 385 in the set. And then I have written Bowman all years because eventually I'll have a, a Bowman binder here. And, you know, uh, Richard Almanzar, uh, Fletcher Bates, none, none of these people I even recognize hardly at all. Um, most of these will be their first Bowman card here. So I think that these look really cool all next to each other. I'm not going for all 385 cards and the seller has another about 80 cards or whatever. Some of them are duplicates of these. So I'm looking at like about 60 cards that are feasible to purchase maybe. Um, so that would be kind of cool. What else is going on? Like I said, I just went out for fun, had a fun time. And, you know, again, supply and demand, you know, um, the demand for, you know, a Gary Rath is not very huge. Is there a huge supply of them? Probably not. And, but you see, that is an eBay item, so I can get that from halfway across the United States. If I had to buy it locally or whatever, then my choices would be a lot limited. If I went to a sale and had this Gary Bates car, I'm sorry, um, Gary Rath card here, you know, uh, an LCS might say, well, this is $3 because it's autographed. You know, and I was like, mm, okay, maybe, but it's got a dented corner in this or whatever. And um, I think the backs are all fairly similar here. I haven't even looked to see if these are the same pictures from the front. Nope, these are different pictures from the back, so really kind of a cool set there. Doesn't have a lot of valuable rookies or anything in here. Um, you know, there's going to be like 
people like uh, Derek Jeter and a few other guys that are Hall of Famers that you're probably not going to easily get and the chances of them being legit are pretty zero but I just don't remember this product when it came out and I do remember those mixed packs that you would buy and they would throw in like one or two like shiny Bowman off the top of some unproven rookie maybe some sort of guy that was the Hall of Very Good and you just didn't get a lot of Bowmans now they're just a commonplace Bowman is doing unless you're doing retail searches you just don't see Bowman but I think this is kind of an inexpensive way to start a collection and then eventually I'll work on the good autograph signers through the mail I just haven't been doing a lot of that I do have one letter going off to the last surviving one of the last surviving Tuskegee Airmen because he said he wanted for his 100th birthday he wanted everybody to send him a letter so that's what I'm going to be doing that's going to get an extra stamp on it tomorrow because I want to get that out pronto hope everybody enjoyed what they're doing today and yesterday and, and tomorrow and thank you for watching